They're all desperate to know what's happening outside. I Patch Man explains that there aren't many stations left, but he got the general gist of it. The first 24 hours there were hundreds of cases, which the government simply solved by sending the blind people to the asylum and asking everyone else to stay home. Then, the general public had to watch how specialists around the world got together to have conferences where they used lots of words to just say they didn't know what was going on. Soon even the specialists got infected and the sickness began appearing overseas. People got tired of waiting at home and tried to go outside, but soldiers were on watch and arrested anyone breaking the rules. The city became chaos, especially because car crashes kept happening and even planes began to fall as well. Citizens began getting scared and decided to stay home after all, so now the city is a desert and the government is doing nothing about it because they're blind as well. Days later, a huge group of infected people is brought to the asylum, and the soldiers show how vicious they've become by shooting a man for simply getting off the line by accident. The sound of the gunshot triggers people's panic and everyone rushes inside by pushing each other without a care and even breaking the doors. The worst part is, the soldiers don't even come to pick up the body. Hoping they can bury it themselves, the doctor's wife requests a shovel, which the soldiers throw in the middle of the yard without moving from their towers. Since the doctor's wife is still pretending to be blind, she asks for directions, and the soldiers mess around with her until she finds the shovel and gives them the finger. Meanwhile, the doctor is trying to communicate with the representatives of the other wards to coordinate the burials, since two more people have gotten shot, he also wants to discuss the fact one of the wards is taking more food than their fair share. The bartender gets tired of hearing the doctor act as a leader and declares himself king of Ward 3, his first order being that his ward can eat all they want before they even consider helping with the bodies. Later, the doctor's wife goes to check on the thief, who has a fever because his legs got a serious infection. She tries to stay supportive, but the thief suddenly threatens her as he reveals he knows she isn't blind, causing the wife to rush back to her husband and finally have a breakdown. The thief can't stand the pain anymore and waiting for things to end naturally is just an exercise in agony, so he drags his body outside and lets the soldiers shoot him. The doctor's wife feels guilty and begins wondering if she should tell everyone the truth, but the doctor forbids her to do it, he also expresses his worry over the fact their relationship has become something more like a nurse and a patient instead of a marriage. Sometime later, the bartender manages to find the asylum's administrative office with the help of the accountant, a fellow Ward 3 member that has been blind since he was born, meaning he has a better grasp of how to live like this. Using the PA system, the bartender announces he'll take control of the whole asylum as its king, and the first new rule is that people will have to pay for their food. This rule isn't well received and soon there's chaos near the food storage as everyone fights to get access, so the bartender reveals his secret card, he managed to keep a handgun with him when he was brought to the asylum. With a warning shot, he sends everyone back and takes control of the food storage, announcing they'll be guarding it all day long and threatening to shoot anyone that tries to steal. Some people consider not playing along, but it's too dangerous when the enemy has a weapon. The doctor's wife begins collecting everything she can from the people in her ward, from jewelry that includes wedding rings to anything that they can find in their pockets, although she keeps a pair of scissors that she finds in a woman's bag. The kid doesn't have anything to offer, but Sunglasses Woman has become his surrogate mother and promises to pay for him. At the food storage, the accountant is using his experience to identify the quality of the objects they're brought by touching them. No matter how expensive the jewelry is though, the bartender only assigns a couple of boxes per ward and threatens anyone that dares to complain. People find themselves having to share one-person meals, and the doctor keeps to himself, not in the mood to keep his leadership kindness up when he feels like a failure. Sunglasses woman approaches him to comfort him, reminding him there's nothing he can do against a gun, and the two of them end up getting frisky on the floor. The doctor's wife finds them while they're finishing, but instead of making a scene, she tells Sunglasses woman that she can see, asking her to keep the secret and letting her own guilt do the rest. A week later, once everyone in the asylum has run out of things to pay with, the bartender announces that they'll take service from women in exchange for food. The doctor's wife goes outside to demand to know why new rations haven't arrived, and the soldiers explain they've given them all they have, so rationing is up to them. An argument begins around Ward 1 deciding on how to proceed, and the doctor cuts it short, pointing out it's not up to them to make the